Hello everyone and welcome finally to our latest tutorial. It's only been like 389 months since our latest one. <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that. It's just we keep getting busy in the office. Today we bring you a very nice one actually that we see sometimes actually quite a few people tend to struggle with, which is how to integrate your 2D backgrounds and your 3D renders, how to make these come together and how to experiment with them. I'm also going to have a one of my main boys, uh, Timon, from the team in with me, and he's going to also take part in this, and we're kind of jumping off each other and trying to uh, comment on how we come up with this. So we've set this tutorial up in four simple steps to follow. Uh, your basic 3D, so you guys can understand the model, using masks, mood drafts and tests, and finally, doing the post-production. Now, this is our favorite part, of course, and you're gonna see a little bit of the process of just having a bit of fun with it. But before then, I just want to kind of let you guys know a little bit about the news. And uh, if you want to just pass this, the time code is below and you can just jump straight to the tutorial. As you guys may know, we are nearly hitting the 100K subscribers. To celebrate this, we want to kind of do a Q&A video. So if you guys want to just send us your questions, email us info at arc9learn.com if you want to comment below. I think the comments below would be ideal. And we can reply to all these, kind of your most frequent questions, all the questions you, you guys may have uh, in regards to whatever. You're probably going to ask, how do we change the cameras once uh, they're signed off, which is like one of the most asked questions ever. Um, but yeah, don't forget to subscribe and comment, comment and like our stuff. Of course, it's always appreciated and keeps the channel going. Don't forget to visit arc9learn.com. And just a big thank you to everyone for subscribing and liking. We never thought we'd get here and we're nearly at the 100K, which is awesome, guys. So I really hope you guys like this tutorial and I'm going to leave you with my boy Timon, who's going to show you through all these beautiful things that we can come up with with backplates. Hello, everyone. Timon here. So it's nice to see you again in the new tutorial. Uh, before we jump into the actual post-production and photo bashing, there is a quick one on how we did the 3D. So Danny from our team completed it and um, we asked him to do a really simple model, a really simple villa and that's what he did wonderfully. If you can't model or you don't know how to, to do 3D, don't worry. Here's a few links of um, on where you can find a, such a villa or such a really simple model for your scene. So there is for example Sketchfab or, or 3D Warehouse where you can find really nice models for free. So go and get those there. Um, all you have to know about the 3D part is do as best as you can and then render your ID, your wire color, your mask, your alpha mask. That's all you need for the rest. And now that we have our 3D renders ready, we are going to load them in Photoshop. So to do so, I'm going to use Bridge. And here you can see where, um, how to load them into Bridge. And then in the tools, uh, on the top of your bar, you can load files into Photoshop layers. So Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. And this is going to load them all straight to Photoshop the way we like them to be. Um, be careful not to open them just like this because it's going to open as many Photoshop scenes as passes you have. So be careful with that. A small note here, if you don't see this uh, option in your tools uh, with Bridge, means that your Photoshop version and your Bridge version is not up to date. So just update both of them and uh, this beautiful option will appear. Okay, so one of the most important things is actually masking and getting out a correct mask. And there, there are two important elements that we're gonna use for this, which is your beauty pass and your alpha mask. So we come to channels, as you can see, which is generally next to your layers, or you can go up to window and select channels. And we select the alpha mask in the channels, just with a control click. And basically we go over to our uh, folder where we have our render and we just create a mask at the very bottom. Once that is done, we basically uh, grab our image. We just drag it in, whatever image. Now, bear in mind, Timon has actually put a, kind of a sunset-y one, but it, I don't think the sunset really comes through on this one. It's kind of, it, it looks like the sun's already set. But anyway, we, we like to explore things and have fun with it. So we, we put this one in and you'll see quite a few drafts. You'll notice that Timon is also kind of coming up with a with a floor plate and he's isolated that and it shows you very quickly how you can even use the render IDs or the render elements, which are these things that come out of the render engine, which you can use just with the one tool, selecting that color and it will select everything unless at the top you put contiguous, which it will only follow the outline of that color. So I think that covers more or less masks. 
All right, and now that we have this basic technique out of the way, uh, we can have some fun with it and just try different photos, different photo bashing, you know, and try different daytime, different moods, and see what you can come up with. So here we have a, a few examples of daytime, sunset moods, more darker moods, and what we really keep in mind uh, when we work on this is where is my sun direction coming from, so we need to match that with the photo. Try to get a proper a uh, big photo um, with a huge amount of pixels to match the 3D, not to have uh, too big of a difference in quality. The perspective, the values, the color and tonalities, all of this, should the photo should already kind of match the 3D. The more you can match the 3D with your photo, the best it's going to be for the, um, the post-production later on. After you've seen a couple of examples, there's nothing like seeing, okay, how do you do it, right? And so we're going to run through this very quickly so you guys can understand. Uh, myself and Timon are going to be talking about this. So one of the best things we did was actually come up with an image that's totally different, right? Like I had this idea, let's use this background of kind of and integrate this aquarium type thing. Uh, I, it looks nothing like an aquarium. Is that, is that the good thing with doing mood draft is you can really try crazy things. And actually we did this um, completely crazy idea uh, and we really liked it. The, it yeah. looks kind of like an installation in a museum <laughs> or in an aquarium. And we're like, you know what, it's crazy, but let's just work with it. Yeah, and doing it in post, of course. Okay, so now the best part, how it's actually made, right? And as you guys can see, we've, uh, Timon's gonna be on this one as well. Uh, I've brought up the image and we have this kind of idea, let's make this aquarium-like image and let's go with that. And we started bashing in together some images. And again, this is all a bit of fun. They're very rough images that we come up with. But there are two things that are very important in this. And so you guys understand, which are values and colors. And that's what we want to bring together, right? With the back plate, which is this photograph that we have in the back to match the foreground, right? And this is like the number one thing that is uh, the most important element. And you'll notice I'm already kind of with a contrast bringing that down and with a very simple color balance straight away trying to bring these values together. Yeah, we can see that this just uh, matching the backplate and then adjusting the 3D to the backplate works really well. And you can actually tell it works like the, the two images matches together. And now all we are going to do is refine it, adding some some you know texture into the into it, some more refinement of the values and everything, and just build the image from there. So once we've brought our basic photo together, uh, I started thinking, okay, um, how can we kind of have fun with this? And this is the whole part of having fun, right? You guys have seen the basic backplate tutorial, but this is also a bit of post-production. This is like we're preparing an image that exemplifies a concept. Now, it's not so much about photo perfection, and it's not about this 3D. Of course, we have very talented people that you'll see and artists that are amazing at 3D, but sometimes we have to come up with quick concepts, right? And this is kind of that quick concept uh, that, that really exemplifies this. And you start to see exactly how we start to build up parts of this, you know, using the caustics, uh, kind of experimenting around. Again, this is just, a, once again, the power of post-production, right? You don't have to do everything within the render. This render was never supposed to be underwater. It was like a night render, right? And we're kind of playing around with it and think, oh, wait, let's do it under render. And again, this is not a take on architecture. This is purely an image because, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes people think, oh, architecture, that has nothing to do. And that's not how you develop through an image. We are making images at the end of the day, right? We're not designing so much the architecture, not in this one specifically, although sometimes you can. Again, just kind of trying to get into understanding all the colors, how everything is working, uh, those highlights from the, the actual screen. And you guys will always notice what we always do, which is kind of not zoom in too much. Yeah, definitely. So not zooming in, especially at this stage, allows you to focus on the aspect like the big image and not the details, because you can really easily get caught up into detail and lose, losing, like just lose hours of work uh, doing something that you might not even keep in the end. So it's always good to work um, zoomed out and keep the whole image in mind. Yeah, and you see like the reflection that we're creating in that glass that kind of just fakes it. I think we just brought everything together and we basically just shrank it down and it just fakes that reflection. And we even used an overlay there, that, that middle thing uh, that has a little bit of orange color just to fake it ever so slightly and really give that that impression. Also kind of having the people that reflect on, on these screens, right? On these, uh, on this uh, acrylic, um, acrylic screens really helps as well. So yeah, you'll just notice that from here on out, it's all about kind of just uh, 
the small brush details, you know, a little bit of the small brush detail. We've done the the big brush, which is bring the back plate and the fore and um, and the foreground together. That's mm -hmm. kind of working. We see that it's working now. It's kind of eh, let's experiment with it and have a little bit of fun. And in the end, I think we we change it quite a bit when you guys see the end. Definitely, uh, yeah. And, and the, the good thing um, by using photos like this, like the caustics or the um, textures on the 3D, really helps to break this, you know, 3D look and get the backplate and the 3D to work a lot more together. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the techniques, one of the main things that people really, that, you know, artists that are just starting off, that they, they in the beginning, they think that everything is so overcomplicated, but no, it's really just really simple techniques. But the thing is to get the mastery of those, right? It's like tomorrow, I decide to be a carpenter. Man, trust me, I'm never going to be a good carpenter. <laughs> And it will take me a long time to use those tools in such a nice way. So it's not actually, you know, it's the tools, it's the practice and kind of having the eye. And then with time, you can get these rough sketches to be really refined uh, and look really good uh, once you send them off. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, I think at this stage, the image already works really nicely. And we just are adding all these effects, you know, this water, these um, reflections to make the, the image, like, you know, we're kind of chasing the wow effect in there because the image already works and already conveyed the message we wanted to convey. The but Michael we, Bay. The Michael Bay, yeah. <laughs> the Michael Bay flares. <laughs> so you actually could stop just here at this stage if it was uh, for an architectural presentation or something. But if you're going like us for a more concept art to look on, to go more into the feel and emotion of the image, it's really fun to try this type of um, adding elements, you know, like yeah. this. And just then sketching and kind of having a bit of fun with it and understanding what's wrong and what's right. I think one of the main things in this one that really didn't work was those lights, those light, the, those light spheres. Yeah. Because let's face it, in an aquarium, you're never going to have those light spheres around and they, n they never really worked. So you'll see like in the final, we kind of just brushed them out. And the final is just basically, you know, just drawn over and kind of taking out a few of the errors. Just because, again, it's a concept. So, you know, we don't have to have this pixel perfection. It seems like everyone in this day and age is so, you know, when we do our professional work, definitely pixel perfection. But if you're, you know, you're a student or you're, you're kind of getting into this, pixel perfection should not be on your list of worries. You know. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> the one thing I really like about this image is our originalities. And I'm pretty sure if you come up with something that's completely original, even if it's sketchy, it's concept art, it's different, well, that's going to leave a good effect on your audience. Um, because if you do something that, you know, everyone has seen a number of times already, yeah. what's the point on that? Uh, well, to, to be honest, like, nothing is ever original. Even this one, I, I've seen a couple of yeah. underwater pictures. And, you know, to what point do we not get influenced by these things in the back of our minds as well, right? Because we retain everything. Nothing is ever kind of original. It's always like a reinterpretation of something. So I know, like... I would have had something on my mind or some pictures that I've seen in the past and I'm like, oh yeah, that might fit and uh, kind of get a certain feeling for them. So it's all that library that you build up in your brain that really kind of makes you want to, you know, that, that builds all this stuff for you. Definitely. <laughs> and now that we are at the end of the, um, of the whole run through, I would just break down the steps on how we came to that. And it was simply matching the background plate with the 3D and adjusting the color of the 3D to match the plate. And the values. And the values. And then working a bit on the atmosphere, the lighting, and getting that, you know, um, ready. And once you get there, your image is pretty much done already. All you have to do is have some fun, add some texture, try caustics, try uh, adding some ambience and effects. And yeah, and here you go, you, you have your final image. And there we go. It's as simple as that. Just have a bit of fun with it, guys. All right, guys, it's great to be back. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of tutorial. Uh, it's, it's been a long while. I keep saying this to you, but we're going to have, we have a lot of stuff. We don't have a lot of time, though. There is a ton of projects going on here at Akina <laughs> lately. It's been crazy, um, but we have some fun stuff coming up. Uh, guys, do join our meetup group below as well. Uh, there's something yeah, we, we hope to plan a, a new meetup in the future. La last last one was really, really fun. It was yeah. amazing to meet you people. 
Don't forget to check out our, as well, our other videos, Archivist and Chill, which is our podcast that we did, which is, you learn a lot because we talk a lot, uh, <laughs> but you'll get to learn a lot from a, kind of the professionals who do this day in and day out and really... Yeah, because we, we tend to forget about. that the archivist <laughs> industry is not only about visualization and architecture, there is a lot of other jobs involved, like yeah, the first definitely. episode is with our good friend David Cabrera. Yeah. And yep, uh, yep. who is an architectural photographer, and it, it's really, really worth uh, listening to this. Yeah, definitely. And I guess once again, a big thank you to Tim Asabi, Timon, we call it Tim Asabi, <laughs> <laughs> for being here. And don't forget, guys, to like and subscribe and just comment below. We look forward to those um, to those questions you guys have for the 100k episode that we're kind of prepping up. And yeah, guys, until the next one, do it in post. <laughs>